Jake Ludington here at OpenStack Days in Seattle, and I'm here with Sriram, aka Cloud Don. And it's been a while since we've talked about OpenStack, and I think it's, I think it's actually been several years since we've we've Couple been on camera years. together. Yeah, that's true. And the OpenStack landscape was quite a bit different then because really there was uh, not a whole lot of production deployment, maybe none at that point. And now it sounds like like many many companies are are using OpenStack. Yeah, that's right. Uh, thanks, Jake. Thanks for. Uh, um, interviewing and thanks for being here thank you so uh, the, I think the last time we spoke the uh, the landscape was mostly with a lot of startups and uh, big players are just getting beginning to show their uh, uh, cloud and uh, we had adoption but I would say it was more like everybody was looking at test dev and you know we have handful maybe eBay was showing at that point and but since then, you know, we have lots of lots of product and use cases now. We had Walmart on stage today. We had Comcast on stage today. And you know, the most recently, there's like a Snap deal from India. They have their own private cloud on production. So, OpenStack has been seeing a lot of success in production among even you know different size companies. So uh, that's definitely like you know, it's an indication that w the product uh, indication of maturity. Right. So, and so. As you're seeing these companies uh, kind of emerge and, and talk openly about using OpenStack, what kinds of things are you seeing that are, are the trends that are emerging from that? So, uh, see, there are there are few trends here. Right? I think uh, if you look at the OpenStack evolution per se, and if you look like innovation around OpenStack per se, early early on there was a lot of focus on solving the deployment or installation problem, right? And then uh, it's at a stage where now it's you can get a reasonable with, with a reasonable amount of um, difficulty you can get it get it installed at a, at a larger scale so the the installation difficulty or deployment difficulty is no longer the problem right I think uh, day zero is kind of solved but you know what happens after that running how do you make the operations easier so that is what is like there's a lot of focus on happening right now but you know along with it I think there is a a big, big um, hype, I would say, or big movement on containers, right? That's kind of what uh, trying to um, overtake the OpenStack momentum. Yeah, because right? I, I would actually yeah. say that I think the last time we spoke, containers was also not a very big thing. That's true. That is true. So, so you know, uh, there's, a, I would say the the container landscape is still like what uh, uh, what OpenStack was two years ago, right? There's a lot of promise there. There's a lot of problems to be need to be solved. Uh, uh, Having said that, there's a lot of momentum from multiple players. Right? Like Microsoft investing big on that. You would have seen the Docker announcement from Microsoft. Google is like you know pushing Kubernetes big time, right? And and you know um, for 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 those, you might have heard from the panel as well. Like there's a lot of things that still need to be moved to cloud, and then OpenStack is in a great place for that. But for someone who is not in there yet and was just thinking about, hey, maybe like I can just orchestrate uh, my applications on containers using an orchestration engine. Why do I need OpenStack? They haven't completely thought through. I would say, like you know, they, you 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 still need. How do you, how are you going to uh, um, support your, your SDS or SDN? Is there a unified API to pull them all right? Multiple pieces. OpenStack fits in nicely there, and the way that OpenStack has embraced the container phenomenon was, is amazing. Like from being a threat, it has gone to like you know, um, it, they are like mutually coexisting and and, and unified. Offer a unified solution now, right? There's a lot more work needs to be done, but overall, like I think, OpenStack community has done very well in adopting containers. So, and then uh, speaking of community, I mean, we're here at, at OpenStack Days Seattle. Seattle. Yeah. Um, how, what's the OpenStack uh, world look like here in Seattle? Oh, well, awesome! That's right. I think um, you know. Um, we are the capital cloud of capital, uh, capital of cloud computing. Uh, Amazon, Google, uh, Azure is all here. So, so uh, we do have a strong, small but strong presence. So the Blue Box folks, uh, IBM Blue Box folks, have been like running the OpenStack meetup every month for the past 18 to 24 months. I would say there's been consistently like 20 to 30 people, or maybe 40 to 50 people coming in every month, right? And then we have this second annual OpenStack Day. We had a sold out event last year, and then we had a sold out event this year as well. That only shows that there's there's, there's a consider considerable interest. And then just looking at the registrations, like I see a lot of local folks. Like you know, I have registration from Costco, from Impinch, from Getty Images, from um, from Tableau, right? Uh, not necessarily whether they're using OpenStack or the. I mean, I, I I really don't know like at what stage of OpenStack they're at, but like the fact that they're interested in attending an on-day event that shows that like there is there is good good um, momentum around OpenStack here in the Seattle region, right? Of course, it won't be as big as like the big players, but you know we have a good good uh, community which is strong and and and, and cohesive. Does that mean there will be a OpenStack Day Seattle 2017? I hope so. I want to do that. Yes, that's right. And and you know. Um, 
it might it might make m more sense to include like more open open cloud technologies rather than just OpenStack. But uh, we definitely would like to have OpenStack Day Seattle and hoping to have it much larger than what we are right, right now. So um, yeah. The other thing I want to talk to you about, you know, uh, the, the theme of this event, right? So we have two tracks on enterprise and telcos. Since the time that we spoke, right, the, the, the last time that we spoke, it was more like, hey, what is OpenStack? And you know, what, who's using it, right? But now it has gone to a stage where like you see uh, big companies, retails and you know, web, web scale, hyperscale workloads running there. But there's a considerable adoption on telcos in the last uh, 12 months, right? And uh, we have a fully populated N a telco NFE track, and then I was at the ODL summit a few days ago, and then uh, met with the OPN NFE folks, and it was it is interesting to see like how the open source community is OpenStack and OPNFV, and they're all coming together, and um, the fact that AT and T, Verizon, like all top providers, right, they have something to do with OpenStack, that is fascinating. That is fascinating. Do you know, do you know why the carriers are adopting OpenStack? So uh, it's I mean. Um, the, the, from what I understand, right? Of course, I should. I have a lot. I mean, I have a lot of learning to do around the telco space. But see, if you look at OpenStack, uh, the goal was to have the container native applications, right? I think the definition of container native, uh, sorry, cloud native applications. I'm sorry, cloud native applications, right? The definition of cloud native applications have been kind of morphed into just by the container phenomenon, right? Container native, right? Whether it's container native or not, I think I think that some of the common themes is like you know be as stateless as possible, be more fault tolerant, be more distributed, right? That's how OpenStack was solving. And and it turns out that like, you know, a lot of VNF and, and those kind of uh, workloads, they are like naturally like, you know, they're cloud native or, or distributed, right? So that's that's one reason why like, you know, you see a lot of adoption in that, that space, right? And you know, the enterprises came along a little bit like uh, in, the, in the in between and then they wanted to have requirements like HA and stuff. There is a need for HA in a different different case, right? You can't have a call, uh, if, I, if I lose a call, when I make a call, I can't have like, I can't, I, I cannot, rec I can't take 10 seconds to recover, right? I need to be able to recover right away. So look, th those have a different kind of um, requirements, but the fact that like, you know, you can, you, uh, they are more of either stateless or st fault aware. So that's make it more, more suitable for running OpenStack, uh, or running on OpenStack. That makes sense. Well, hopefully the next time I talk to you, we'll, we'll see even we'll more see. Ev evolution. We'll definitely see, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Jake. Thank you for covering this here. And, and you know, uh, it is going to be interesting um, the way that OpenStack community has adopted and, and embraced the phenomenon. It's going to be great. There are some, there are still more challenges. I think the challenges are more in terms of like is private cloud as suitable or not. That's kind of the discussion that, that that's in, that's kind of the question that is in mindset. And uh, as I always say, it's not like one solution fits all. It, it's going to be a combination of multiple, multiple solutions, multiple offerings. So um, uh, it is going to, what is, is, what is reality is going to be like in the next like few years, you're going to see that, um, any reasonable size and uh, any reasonable size customer is going to have like OpenStack at, at, at in some way. So that that's what is going to be there. And and whether it's going to be the only solution or it's going to be like combination of hybrid, that that you know most likely it's leaning towards a hybrid solution. So um, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Bye bye. Bye.